That's the same word that we had at the beginning on our summary, simian. The Unless you yourself experience some sort of token or sign of my authority, you struggle to believe me right now. And the ultimate shift will come in the future where Jesus says, all you see and you believe, blessed is he who does not see and yet believes, says to Thomas, the disciple. But right now he's using these miraculous signs to develop belief. Uh, 50, verse 53 is an example of the goal of this gospel. Uh, the son is healed simply by Jesus' word. Then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he and all his household believed. So the goal of the gospel is to experience and then believe. That's a common theme in John's version of, of the gospel. Uh, verse four, th uh, 54 references uh, that this was the second miraculous sign. Again, this was the second overt token of Jesus' authority that he performed, having come from Judea to Galilee. I went back and read trying to locate the first one. According to chapter 2, verse 11, the turning the water into wine was the first one, but it's still confusing because it says, since he came from Judea to Galilee. And so I assume this means this current on this current trip, he had another one, but at this point we're just splitting hairs and getting off on, on tangents that aren't profitable. But he he the script the gospel writer references this one miraculous sign as noteworthy. He did other things in between here and there. For instance, he prophesied that the woman was married five times, but this one was so overt that it was used, just the sign itself was used to make believers. Whereas in Samaria, his words are what made believers. That's all we have for today. Are there any comments or questions before we close? You can probably guess your homework for next week. Walk in this scripture like you've never read it before and let the words just flow into you. Enjoy it. Pretend you're watching a movie. You're walking into the world of this, this account of Jesus' life. And notice, notice things. Um, be in prayer before you read. The, the ancient uh, tradition is called Lectio Divina, where you pray and, and you allow yourself to, to notice whether or not it's, it's really hot outside when you're standing by the well with Jesus. Uh, how big is the well? I want you to vis let the Holy Spirit put these visuals within you. Um, and it'll really pop going forward. You'll probably not forget, for instance, if you visualize it well, that Jesus stood on the shore while his disciples did the baptizing. That was Jacob's well? Mm-hmm. You wonder if it was the kind of wells that you read about that where they had to walk down to the water. It was a big open. Now, they've dug up where they think this well is, and, and uh, it's 137 feet to the water. And it's, it's you got to drop a line, apparently. Well, but maybe they dug wrong. I thought they had steps going further down. They might have. Her objection is that the well's so deep is the issue. <coughs> Well, let's have prayer. I'll be available if anyone wants to talk afterward. If you could please rise. Almighty God, we thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the, the, the powerful miracles he performed years ago. We thank you for the spirit that enlivens your church today. Uh, while the, the people back then were a bit of we're the beneficiaries of seeing um, his work. We're the beneficiaries of what the woman prayed for and asked for, and that's that living water. We pray we would take advantage of what we have and what you've entrusted to us. We pray that it would drive us to be witnesses, to be those who testify to what we know in Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you continue to bring together people, that you remove divisions and, 
and bring folks under the, the blessedness of your son's name through the power of his blood and, and of the spirit. We pray in Jesus' name that you would continue to get what you want through this era until the swiftness comes at the end when you get to dwell openly with us. We await this. Our life, we pray, Lord, would be a vigil, a patient waiting in faith, and that we could be used by you in the meantime. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.